Today we welcome Howard Garfinkel, truly in my opinion, an icon in basketball, a high school basketball historian, an innovator, a role model, a teacher, a friend, and perhaps over the last 50 years, the most influential voice in high school basketball history. And not only would I uh, make that statement, but I think there are hundreds of coaches and players that live the breath of America that, that feel the same way about Howard Garfinkel. And so it's with an extreme pleasure and honor uh, that we, that uh, for us to be here and for you to allow us to, to talk about the life and times of Howard Garfinkel and the immense impact that you've had on high school basketball, the players, the coaches, the events. So Howard, let's try to familiarize those who watch the, this video uh, conversation between the two of us with, with you. Talk to us a little bit about when you were growing up. What were the sports you were interested in and what were you passionate about? Well, by the way, thank you for that beautiful introduction just the way I wrote it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I wish some of that was true. All of it's <laughs> true. Uh, growing up, I don't remember. That was like uh, 120 years ago. Uh, let me see. I loved two sports, baseball and stoop ball. Just play stoop ball off the, uh, off the wall. There was a great uh, street on 83rd, on 83rd Street, and it was a great point. You have to have a, you know, you have the Spalding, and then you had the point. You have to have a good point, so when you hit it, you know, the ball zooms across the street, or she could get run over, um, and that's what we did every day. But uh, baseball was my game growing up, and uh, I played it quite a bit. I wasn't too bad. Uh, I have witnesses. Uh, Brendan Malone is a witness. He saw me play out in uh, Queens uh, a couple of times prior to uh, games, uh, basketball games. Uh, I got interested in basketball because of a man by the name of Mike Tyneberg. Now, Mike Tyneberg uh, started this whole, the whole thing today called AAU was started by one man by the name of Mike Tyneberg. What he, year would you think that would have that been roughly? That would have been 19, uh, that would be in the 40s. In the 40s, wow. In the 40s. And he had a team called the New York Gems. He had, the, it was the best called outside ball then. We didn't call it AAU or anything. It was called outside ball, meaning outside of high school. And he put a team together called the New York Gems. And they, he had, uh, he had uh, players from all over the uh, New York Eastern area. And he was my bunk counselor at Camp Mascoma. I went to a Camp Mascoma where, where basketball, I don't even think they had a court. And uh, we all played baseball and that was, and he was my bunk counselor. And, I was, um, let me see, 15 to 18, maybe 15, 16, 17. He was a couple of years older. I think he was five years old. And uh, he, he had put this team together, and he told me about it. And he kept telling me about all these plays. He had a great funny personality. He would tell funny stories. And, and I got interested in his teams. So I would go and watch his teams play in the outside tournaments. They had a couple of tournaments now and then in New York. And uh, I'm out at a tournament one night. It was in Queens. It was um, Frank Tempone ran it at the, at the, uh, at one of the, one of the uh, youth, one of the youth uh, organizations in New York. I remember the man's name, Frank Tempone. He was the head of it. And this team is playing, and they're really awful. Really an awful team. 
And during the game, the coach gets sick. The coach gets sick and he can't, and it's about the middle of the regular season. And the coach uh, can't coach anymore. Frank Tempone, who um, I got to know fairly well, asked me, would I be interested in taking over this team? And I said, wow, Frank, you know, I never coached a team before. So it doesn't matter, you know, you do, you do me a favor. I need some, someone's got to take care of these kids. So I uh, coached the team. I'll tell you how bad we were. <laughs> One night, uh, there was a team that came, and they only had four players. And that's a forfeit. And we win on a forfeit. And I says, no, I don't want to win on a forfeit. We'll play. So on this other team were two twin brothers named the Quarto twins, Vinny and Frank Quarto. Uh, Vinny went on to uh, Adelphi and became the all-time leading scorer at one point in the history of Adelphi College. Frank Quarto played for Manhattan College, got a scholarship. Anyway, um, they played four against five and beat, and beat me by 20. Okay? <laughs> True story. So, uh, now the season ends, fortunately, and there's a tournament. At, it's called the Reese, the Reese Center, R-I-I-S Center in Queens. And there's a postseason tournament. Only JV player, no varsity players in high school. It must be JV or, or less. And uh, I get invited. They invite my team. I said, no, let me put together a team. I'll get my own team. So I get the two Quarto twins. They have a friend, uh, Birmingham his name was. They get him. I call up, uh, I go to um, uh, a coach by the name of Lou Carnesecca. Lou Carnesecca is the head high school coach of St. Anne's Academy on Manhattan in Manhattan. And he gives me a player named Kenny Harrison. Who's my roommate in college. I no, yes. you kidding. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's a small world. He gives me Kenny Harrison. And I had worked, uh, I had been to camp, my man, Mascoma. I had been now, now a counselor at Mascoma. And uh, uh, one of the good players there, uh, there was a nice basketball player there. And I call him up and I get him. Anyway, put this team together, and uh, we're we're not supposed to be favored, or we're not you know we're not favored to win it. But what happened is we're pretty good, and it turns out we win the tournament. And it was to this day the greatest thrill and the greatest kick that I've ever had in my entire life in basketball or any sport, winning that tournament, the Reese Center. It was incredible. And uh, that started me on the coaching kick. I got it in my blood. To, and now I'm, now I'm rivaling Tyneberg in, in a year or two. I'm now rivaling Tyneberg. And my name of the team is the New York Nationals. And to make a long story short, over a period of about 15 years, uh, I went 500 on my record, I kept it once. It was 511 and 151. 511 wins, 151 losses with the New York Nationals. Uh, and also Wexler's, uh, I was sponsored one time in that period. The Wexler's formal wear was our team out in Queens at the uh, Grover Cleveland Summer League. Uh, which was probably the greatest outside team in the history of basketball. Outside of, we call it, again, outside ball. There was no mm -hmm. AAU there. Yeah, it'd be, like a, it'd be like a summer league team there. It was a summer league, yeah. And outside, yeah. And um, we, uh, we were 30, we were 39 and one over a two summer, um, two summers in a row. Uh, my team was, if you're interested, uh, I had a guard by the name of Alan Seiden. I remember Alan, Alan played at St. John's. He's a, yeah, he's a top 50. He was on the top 50 list. Uh, Alan Seiden, um, 
and his backcourt partner was was not a great player, uh, but he was his best friend, and he would pass Sidon the ball, so Sidon had the car, and he would drive everyone home, <laughs> so he, he had to have a say. So he picked Artie Benoit, who was his backcourt partner. And up front, we had um, Cal Ramsey. At NYU, one ball, I played at NYU, against Cal. NYU, who uh, was the nation's leading rebounder. Mm -hmm. for two years in a row, averaged 20 rebounds a game for NYU. Six five uh, player by the name of Tony Jackson, mm -hmm. St. John's, invented, who invented the three point shot, one of the greatest shooters in the history of the game. And a, my center was a young man that I helped uh, steer to Ray Lump at NYU by the name of Thomas Thomas Sats Sats Sanders. Sanders. Yep, I played against all, almost every one of those guys you named, yeah, and he was my center. And my my backups, my Fifth and sixth and seventh man. The first summer was um, Art Heyman and Larry Brown. Wow. Okay, and my they were high Larry Brown, kids, the great coach. Kids. Yeah, the greatest, uh, great best guard ever. Super player. And Art Heyman, of course, went to Duke. Was famous uh, high school player. He didn't make it. He didn't great college player. Didn't make it in the pros. Next summer we had Jerry Harkness from Loyola, Chicago. And a great player from NYU who's got in trouble with the scandal, unfortunately. What a player he was, Ray Peprocki. Played against him, too. NYU, yeah. Those are my backups. So uh, those two teams uh, made me not famous, but in outside ball terms, you know, I was fairly well known after that. Uh, we beat everybody. We beat Hawkins and Brown. Hawkins and Brown. On Connie the same Hopkins team. and Roger Brown. Yeah, Roger Brown on the same team. They never lost a game. We beat them. We beat Rudy LaRusso. Mm. We beat Gus Alperi. We, we beat them all. It was incredible. Uh, 39, and, 39 and 1 over two summers. So that was, uh, that was my entrance into basketball. And uh, as a player, I'd say I rate myself. Uh, well, I, I did a service, which I'll get into, of course, a little later on. Uh, but I rated players one through five. Uh, I would have been a one minus on my, <laughs> on my service. Uh, uh, I was eighth. I went to Horace Mann, and I transferred to Barnard High School my senior year. I played on the Barnard High School team. I was eighth man on the worst high school team in New York City, Barnard High School. I didn't start. What position did you play? Uh, lead guard. So you were what? Today they put out a point, point guard. guard, yeah. Point guard. There's no such thing anymore, by the way, as a point guard. I mm. don't know why they call it a point guard. Back in those days, there was a point guard. I named it, for God's sakes. I, I mean, I gave the name point guard. I made it famous. Me. Believe it or not. So and today they call it point guard. It's lead guard. Point guard will meant the, the put. The, the, the 5'10 kid would stand on the point, the top of the yeah, he'd be point, the and he'd stand there and pass the ball around. So he was the point guard. Today there's no more, but they're points guards. Points yeah. guards. <laughs> good, right? good analogy. Point good guard. analogy. Lead, lead guard is what they are. They lead the team. Yes. Anyway. Goff, let me, let me say this. Uh, you and I have been friends close to 50 years, and today is the first day that I ever knew that you coach Kenny Harrison. Kenny Harrison and I were roommates at Villanova my freshman year. Villanova, I know. right. Right. And, uh, and, That's uh, amazing. He was uh, a great, great human oh, being. What a person. What a great person he, he was. Oh, yeah. I love that. He, he taught me, he mentored me my whole freshman really? year at Villanova. Oh, that yeah. funny? Hey, let me ask yeah, you another and, and question. Then, of course, through, through uh, Kenny Harrison later on, we got a, we got arguably uh, maybe the, Maybe the second best player that ever played for me. Sidon was the best. Maybe the second best was York Larisi. Yes, I, I uh, played an all American, great Carolina. all American player at, yeah, at North yeah. Carolina. And you know what else about York Larisi? He was on the Warriors team when Wilt scored the hundred points. Yeah, he was yeah. one of Wilt's right. teammates in that game, and when Wilt scored the hundred points. Goff, let me ask you this: I've heard this. You might know whether it's true or not. In high school. Uh, at Larry Brown's high school, he, he, him and Billy Crystal were the two starting uh, starting guards on the high school team. You know if that's true or not? Billy Crystal, the comedian. Yes, 
I sat behind him at a movie premiere and we got into a conversation. I asked him how he became so keenly interested in basketball. And he said, because I played in high school. And I said, were you, I was just joking. I said, were you any good? He says, well, I'll tell you who was the other guard on my high school team. And I said, who? He said, Larry Brown. I said, you and Larry Brown played in the same high school team? He said, yeah, we were the starting back court. Billy Crystal told you that? Yes. It must be true. But I, but I, but it only but it I, has to be validated by the great guard. No, I can't validate it because I, uh, I, I brought Larry Brown. I, Larry Brown played Long Beach High School, mm -hmm. and a a florist, uh, a friend of mine who was in the flower florist business, was a big basketball buff, and he told me about uh, this kid at Long Beach High School. And I was putting together a team for the, uh, for the Bedford, it was the Bedford Y, Bedford Y uh, postseason tournament. Uh, I had Billy Burwell. I, don't know if you remember I remember, name. I, I recruited Billy Burwell. Billy Burwell. He went to Illinois. Yeah, there you go. Billy Burwell, I had uh, a few other players, uh, I forgot the names right now, uh, come back to me as we speak. And I needed a lead guard. And I went out to see Larry Brown, and I loved him. And Larry Brown's first game out of Long Beach in his life was in the Bedford Y in Brooklyn for my team called the New York Nationals. And we won the tournament, and Larry Brown was MVP. Wow. And he was a great, great high school player. A lot of but people I, don't know I, how great a player he was. He was a tremendous player. Uh, he won the... Uh, the, when the ABA split off from the NBA, the first All-Star game, uh, I remember this one was on TV, the MVP got a car, and he won the MVP. He got the first car. He gave him a, I think it was, Cadillac or something. But uh, tremendous high school, league guard, I mean, tremendous.